We are back. It's First Choice Fantasy. How you living? How you feeling? How you doing? Um, today we got our risers, our fallers, our what are they? Stock up, stock downers. We got everybody. We got everybody for you. We got two stock ups, two stock downs per uh, host. If you guys want to call us that, I don't know if I can call us shit, but we're just gonna go. We're just gonna dive right into. It. We're gonna start off with Alex with his yeah. stock up players. The two. Let's hear him. All right, so this is going to connect to one of my stock downs. But I'm going with Chase Edmonds for stock up because the dude just continues to look really good. And um, I, at some point, I don't know when he's going to get more of a workload, but that has to be coming soon. And, like, he's a Kenyon Drake ankle tweak away from assuming a hell of a lot of responsibility. And you saw what happened last year when Drake was given that same opportunity. What's happening to Drake this year? I don't know. I, I, I don't watch the Cardinals, but – I just keep seeing that he's rushing for like three yards of care. But uh, more on that later. My second is T. Higgins because A.J. Green is just not that good anymore. Sorry. I hate to break it to you, but he's not. And Higgins, to me, looks better. He's performed better. And I, Burrow's starting to notice that. I mean, four catches on eight targets against Baltimore doesn't necessarily do a lot for you. But Those targets mean Baltimore, so Yeah, exactly. In a game so that they're get, down needing points. If he can continue to get those like eight to ten targets, he's a very talented receiver. They use him in the red zone. I think he's a pretty solid option moving forward. When at the start of this year, we weren't sure if he's going to be like number three or number four or number five. And like now, he, I think you can make the argument he's number two. So, John Ross has been a healthy scratch for a while too, so that's uh, notable. Yeah. I guess they're done with that experiment. Higgins is my motherfucking guy, first of all. Second of all, you again, Brandon, or Alex. I don't know who I'm fucking, but Alex, I traded you Chase Edmonds, and I was expecting him to just be a handcuff, but the workload is split, supposedly. I think it's like 60-40 now, something like that. So, Well, uh, I, Edmonds only had, like, what, three carries last week? He just got, like, five catches. I they gave Drake, like, 18 carries, but uh, I don't know how longer you're going to keep that split up when Edmonds averaged, like, 12 yards a carry and Drake averaged three. Yeah, yeah. Drake has uh, choked. But uh, moving forward, I'll dive into my stock ups real quick. I got a quarterback by the name of Mr. Wentz. First name Carson, in case you were curious. Uh, his stock's going up. He's on the rise. He's on the rise. Trust me. Believe me. Believe me or not. Uh, Ripley's right. believe not. Carson Wentz has the weapons right now that nobody else has in the league. You know, it's like Travis Fulgham. He's a fucking stud. Nobody else has Travis Fulgham on their team, you know. But for real, though, for real, though, they got uh, – God are coming back eventually. I don't know how many weeks that's going to be. Uh, Alshon will come back eventually, though. It's, it's, he's not prime Alshon. It's still a player that's better than uh, Deontay Burnett. Barnett, Burnett. I don't know what the fuck their names are, but it's a bunch of scrubs that we have. And uh, having Alshon back, hopefully healthy. Having Sean and Jack Rager. back. And Rager, whatever Rager. Yeah. Rager's a lot of- probably the most important guy there. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I would hope so. Deshaun, I, I wouldn't get excited for Deshaun. He's – they yeah. might as well just cut him yeah. like, when Rager comes back. He can't stay healthy at this point. Yeah, well, regardless, that's – there's all pointing up arrows. Arrows are pointing up for Carson Wentz. are pointing up. For Carson Wentz. He's a, he's a fucking – he's a riser. He's a stock up. He's on the rise. Uh, the market – He can't is, do worse than he had done earlier in the season, so. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but right now he's, pretty, he's driving pretty well. I think he had 19 fantasy points this past week, which obviously – He had a really, solid outing last week. Yeah, yeah. That would have been, been fine with that. Travis Fulham had a pretty nice outing as well. But my second stock up for the this moment in time, Darius Slayton. I was trying to acquire him in, like, all formats last week right before he blew up because yeah. I knew it was going to happen because his matchups coming up are a lot easier than they were the first couple weeks. Uh, the first week in the season he blew up, obviously, and uh, I can see him blowing up a couple more times the rest of the season, and for that reason he's a stock up for me. Up on uh, Darius Slayton was my uh, one of my favorite wide receivers coming into this year. I had him ranked out pretty pretty high in uh, our past rankings videos. Mm. Had some high faith on him, so I second that stock up. Uh, 
Moving on to my stock ups, Miles Gaskin, the man I've been promoting since player. probably week two of uh, this Brent, season. Where are you playing college? That's beyond. That's beyond uh, Not a my true expertise. Fan. Not a true fan. All right. Not a true fan. Washington. I'm not. I'm not a college fan. Simple the as Husky. that. Lady is a Husky. Not not a college fan, so I'm not going to know those those uh, those facts. But uh, what I do know is he's a workhorse back with the Dolphins. You've got Howard, who was a healthy scratch, basically confirming that to me, at least. Oh, and yeah. I think he is a flying. I think he's flying under the radar, and you can probably trade for him for pretty cheap because people are going to have low expectations for him. And as of right now, he's uh he's looking he's looking pretty good. I mean, is he though? Whenever I was watching that one game, he had 22 carries. He just didn't look good. Then again, during, during the off season, you you like David Johnson, right? Because of the guaranteed workload he was going to get with the Texans, oh, yeah. no matter how he looked the season before. Yes, yes. Right, yes. I was on board with you too. Workhorse back is pretty valuable in fantasy. I wouldn't. I don't know. I. Maybe it's because I don't like Miles Gaskin like that. Like, I was on him last year at the end of the year. Like, whenever Kenyon Drake got traded, I was like, Miles Gaskin, that's the hype train. He never even got his fucking opportunity, so I got mad. And now thinking about it, it's like, I don't – I see that he's getting, like, 19 opportunities a game, 18 opportunities a game, but I don't believe in it. Like, I don't see that continuing, you know what I mean? How is that any different from David Montgomery? Or – Montgomery has high draft capital. I think Miles Gaskin was, like, a six-round pick, something like that. Yeah. So at the value of what Gaskins was, you're looking at players like Cohen at the time and like Naeem Hines. That's the type of value you were looking at back then when you were drafting him. But right now, he's he's producing. Isn't it funny how Naeem Hines has just fell off the face of the earth? Yeah, yeah I had my – I was pretty skeptical of that. That we I mean, I had my doubts in week one, but, like, didn't think he would just kind of fall into the drain like they forgot him at the gas station. <laughs> I see Gaskin as a – see, if you're going to have Gaskins on Gaskin on your roster, most likely you either picked him up off a waiver or you traded something for him. So – I would think you're not trading a your running back two for Gaskin. I don't know. I think his value is so low that it's you're you're getting value because that potential. Values. Huh? Say if I wanted to offer you a trade for like say I offered you Michael Gallup for him, what would you say? Michael Gallup for Gaskin, I'd decline. See that's... running backs are more Dang. valuable than what Gallup is in my mind. So most likely I'm going to have plenty of wide receivers on my roster, especially that's, if it's a redraft. That's where we differ, though, because, I mean, like, I don't know. Maybe it's just a conversation for another time, but I feel like Miles Gaskin's opportunity while he's getting it and whatnot, he's not really performing, and there's not much, like, capital they really put into this dude. Like, they brought in Howard, and they brought in Breda, and obviously they're not getting as much work as you would have imagined to begin with, but – I just don't see this continuing with Gaskin because he's not really doing, like, all that. You know what I mean? And, like, if they really trusted him and believed him in the offseason, why didn't they really, like – why did they bring in two other veteran running backs? And why did they not use him at the end of last year? So, it's like, I understand where you're coming from, like, his, gear, his volume right now. But from my personal opinion, I don't – I don't know. I don't like the long-term outlook, I guess, of him. But that's – That's fair. I would I really say – know who's coming to take his touches, but – yeah. My other my other stock here. up yeah. is uh Stefan Diggs. Uh now little tidbit, I was asking these two if he's even a stock up because well, is he already stocked up on or, or what's going on? <laughs> what's up. what are we talking about here? So uh no, Stefan Diggs 
like Alex said, his value is isn't as as high as a lot of wide receivers around him, and I think you could probably get him uh, for cheaper. You think you could trade Amari Cooper for him? Amari Cooper for Diggs? I think you, you think you could trade could. Cooper for Diggs? I think so. That's, that's You're like sitting there trying jumps. to figure out trades. No, it's just where my mind jumps because a lot of people – no, I don't have Cooper or Diggs in any league, so no. I'm just suggesting that, like, Cooper is kind of a – Around like, the I, range. A mid-wide receiver one, would you say? And, I'm, you know, to me, that's what Diggs is right now. And I, I'd probably prefer him to Cooper right now. So if you could make that trade. I, I, do. I don't know if Diggs is seen me now as like a – what about Allen yeah. Robinson or Diggs? It's too hard for me. Like these things. Or is that, or is that a step below Cooper in your mind? No. I would go Diggs. I, I mean, I, I'm still. a big, I'm a big fan of Allen Robinson, but I might take Diggs over him. I'd have to go deeper into that. But either way, I don't, I don't, I think I feel like you can go with the stock up. You know, it's just how you feel about it. Yeah. I feel pretty strongly about. It. I think uh, I think he's performing really well with Josh Allen and the Bills. And yeah, they're doing a lot better than I thought they did. Yeah, they're also giving him a lot of targets, so that's good mm-hmm. to see. Yeah, that that helps to counteract some of that. No, I, Al- I feel it. He's up for me too. Yeah, Alex, you can jump into your uh, stock downs. Right now, like I was going with earlier, my first is Kenyon Drake because he's just in garbage. And, and every year there's a couple of veteran running backs that get, get unknowingly pushed off the block by dudes that no one has really heard of. And this seems like it could very well be one of those because I know everyone's thinking about the Kenyon Drake they might have got at the end of last year, but we haven't seen that guy yet this year. Most of his touchdowns have come on, like, it, I mean, a lot of his fantasy points have just kind of been salvaged by, like, Short touchdowns or unusually high volume for someone who's not performing very well. And I think Edmonds is coming for his job. And at some point, the Cardinals have a decision to make. Because Drake is going to be a free agent this offseason. I'm pretty sure Edmonds still has like two more years of minimal production cost. So which one would you go with long term? Younger, cheaper guy or the older, not as good guy? Not a hard selection here. My second stock down are just going to be Denver running backs in general because I, I – sorry to continue the Denver running back slander, but I, that split just scares the hell out of me because I don't think Lindsey's going to be a bit piece. I think they're going to use him a lot. He'll continue to use Gordon a lot too, but that's, that's just scary to me, especially that, with their uncertainties at the quarterback. I don't know if you can get two like good producing running backs out of that on a week-to-week basis. I'd be looking to move Gordon. Yeah, that, that pairing in Denver just never made sense to me. I think Lindsay's is solid, like, buy low if you can snap him off the waiver wire because he should have, like, some usage. But I, I don't think it'll be a lot. I don't think you're going to be getting RB2 production consistently out of either of these guys. But, like, Gordon, that's someone who – that's what he paid for. Mm. That scares me. And after his production he's having so far, he probably he's probably getting like an RB one price tag. Yeah, I mean if you could flip a good amount for him, I would totally do that. Yeah. Uh, Drew Locke's also supposed to be back week six this week, uh, so that's interesting. Maybe a little change right there in Dallas or in Denver. But moving forward, uh, my stock down, my first stock down is going to be the Dallas wide receivers. Uh, just a grouping. I said possibly because I'm not too sure where Andy Dalton really lies on a talent basis because he was carried by A.J. Green for a lot of his career in Cincinnati. He wasn't really, you know, a, like a solid quarterback like that. He was, he was a good quarterback at best, and he's past his prime years. So he still has a pretty good supporting cast. The offensive line in Dallas is it's kind of getting away, eight away at, I think. Isn't Tyron Smith on IR? I might be tweaking he's out for the year. Out for the Frederick year. retired. Yeah, so they're losing everybody. They just got a bunch of uh, no names at offensive line besides. Yeah, they're starting to struggle a little bit. Yeah, so um, he still has a pretty good supporting cast. Yeah, as you know, those three stud wide receivers, Zeke Elliott. So he might be able to make it work, but the wide receivers, I don't know if they're going to be able to make it work with him. 
Are you seeing Cooper put up, I think, three points this past week? And I feel like they'll make it work. The fear is just that he's not going to get 50 attempts a game in the press guy thing. Well, yeah, it's, yeah. Well, I mean, everybody's stock goes down as a result because I don't think he's going to favor any one wide receiver. At least I can't tell yet. So I'm going to say the entirety of the group is going to go down just because I would, I would assume on average each one of them will lose a few points here and there. But um, like I was talking earlier about Amari Cooper's Tom Diggs, I'd probably take Diggs over Cooper. Um, yeah, that's where I stand with that. And I think those Dallas wide receivers, while – their stock is down. You might want to check their prices, I guess, because if players like Mari Cooper after a three-point game, he might be getting sold pretty cheaply because, you know, he still has that boom-bust factor, according to people, where I think he's still pretty consistent. Um, and CD Lamb, he's been proving he's fucking amazing. And Michael Gallup, he had, he, had, he had penalties taking away his big games, and he did have a pretty big game a couple weeks ago. He had nine points last week. Not bad. Um, I still think they're stocked down overall, though, but if you can get them on the low, attempt to get them on the low, I guess. Yeah, you think two, two uh, well, I guess the one is yeah. multiple wide receivers, but essentially, you think wide receivers all, that all have, like, either struggling to find their quarterback or just lost their quarterback to injury. Yeah, my entire stock up is NFC East oriented. I don't know if you guys. Hey. Yeah, uh, it is. Go back and stock up. Very Slayton stock up. Cowboys and Redskins are football team wide receiver stack down. So my second stock down is Terry McLaurin. Um, the uncertainty at quarterback. I don't know like what's going on with Dwayne Haskins. Not saying he's great or anything, but it's kind of stability. Um, Trading his ass apparently. Apparently, you never really know. That's the, that's the thing. Or Le'Veon Bell. <laughs> no, no, no. That would be awesome. I'd be pissed. Antonio Gibson would be, you know, taken out of the I, I, Nobody wins in that scenario, but that's why it would be so awesome. Dwayne Haskins might win. Dwayne Has- Haskins. No, Sam Darnold would be a loser. <laughs> Ed, I want you to hear your stuff. What? You're saying he's winning because he gets to be the backup quarterback on the Jets. I don't know if he'll be the backup. He's not. I'm not saying Sam Darnold's good, but have you watched Dwayne Haskins play? He's garbage. I said this last year. I said this last year. Do you you remember that? You said he yeah. looked pretty. He looked pretty good in the game against the Eagles. Yeah, you he were say he looked game. amazing, and he did. I didn't he say, did. I didn't say he looked amazing. I said he looked pretty he solid, looked and I wasn't willing to give up on him yet. However, I watched him this year, and I would entirely be willing to give up on him. To me, like, if a quarterback sucks after year one, but he showed glimpses, you ride him in a year two. And if he sucks, then he sucks. You know, like Manning through, like, I don't even remember how many interceptions his rookie year. And I know this gets tossed around a lot. I'm not saying that rookie Dwayne Haskins was as good as rookie Peyton Manning. But, you know, sometimes guys just take that second year. He didn't. I'm done waiting. I'm done waiting. I don't think uh, Alex Smith, no offense to his leg or anything, but I don't think Alex Smith's going to be able to with, like hold up that offense. Same with Kyle Allen, as we talked about Kyle Allen's shit. And, uh, yeah, for that reason, I have Terry McLaurin as a stock down because quarterback stability and quarterback questions over there, it's kind of, uh, kind of scary in my eyes. Scary Terry. No pun intended. That was fire. That was fire. They should just start Kyle Allen because they'll go 2-14 and 14 and then draft Trevor Lawrence. I think they're going to draft Trevor Lawrence regardless. They're probably going to trade, trade up for him. I really hope that doesn't happen because that team with Trevor Lawrence and Terry McLaurin and that defensive line is yeah, yeah. That actually is. kind of intimidating. In Washington. Who would have so, known? I'm going to have to start rooting for Washington to win seven games this year. I don't know how. Well, the they, play, they play the Eagles again. <laughs> <laughs> we, so, need, we need to play Washington more this year. They'll at least get two wins, like you said. Yeah, they play the Giants, too. This week. They're going to win that oh. game. What a... I wish the Redskins would have hired Joe Judge. The Redskins. I keep calling the Redskins. We're not even the Redskins. I wish no. Washington Football Club would have hired Joe Judge. What a name. Brandon, who you're stuck down? Mike Davis. No. Well, hey, well, I, I said, well he can be. Uh, just trade him away. But uh, no, I, I won't do the cop out. Uh, no, Zach Ertz. <laughs> Zach Ertz is my uh, stock down. Uh, get rid of him. 
I I didn't like what I I saw. I kind of hoping that the Eagles move on this year because I don't think that what he's asking to get paid is worth it from what we're getting from him this year. And he's looking slower, in my opinion. I know Alex thinks that is a result of just everything collapsing around him because he can't really run fast no, when there's a building that collapsing on top of you. Been slow. So. But the way the game script's been heading, no, it's not helpful to him. Well, the game script has been in his favor because. Well, not lately because if Goddard's and, out, he's their best blocking in every player. game. Uh, yeah, but you're, you're saying just, blocking wise, okay. Yeah, I mean, like he's still got some targets. But, um, his targets just look really small. And, like, even if like if they have no weapons, teams are still going to key in on him, whether he's having a good year or not. So it's not like people are just going to start ignoring him. So, but, but that's just more of an argument in your favor. Yeah. So he is my stock down, and uh, my next one, it kind of hurts me. Uh, nah. Now, do I have – I don't hope – I, I kind of hope that I'm wrong here. Uh, DJ Chark, I think these injuries piling up for him this year is just it's a little concerning. Uh, week five, he um, – I mean, you may think, oh, well, he was injured. So, like, what did he, what did he have? He had, like, three points. No, he played 65% of snaps and then proceeded to get hurt. Another injury from what he previously had, and it's just uh, it's just uh, complicated and concerning to me as a fantasy owner. And with a year full of injuries, I'm going to see if I can trade DJ Chark. We're in agreement, too. Like the silence was either I mean, an agreement or just complete judgment. No, uh, I'm in agreement. Sorry. Hating you internally. <laughs> internally, okay. internally. All of the above. Alrighty, folks. Uh, that probably bids us adieu. Do we have any other thing to say, boys and girls? Or boys? Football on a Tuesday, man. It's fucking weird. Yeah. I was thinking today was Thursday when I got home. I was thinking, oh, i take the trash down. And then I was like, wait, it's not Thursday. It's Monday. Not Thursday. <laughs> well, I guess that will end the video here. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. Tell your friends, subscribe. Tell your grandma to subscribe. Tell your cat to subscribe. Everybody subscribe to us. We love you. Yeah. First, first, fancy, dude.